Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for inviting me here to speak to you. I'm sorry I don't speak Spanish, uh, but I know many of you will speak English. Um, I'm here to talk about appraisal and what I mean about appraisal, but I thought I should set it in the context of my own orchestra. Um, it goes without saying, but I don't think it can be said enough that the most important people in our organizations are the musicians. Without them, nothing happens. Um, conductors are important, of course they are. Uh, people like us are important, of course we are. But the most important people are the musicians. Um, and particularly in today's straightened circumstances, I guess that over here and everywhere else it's the same situation that we have in, in England, where money is very tight, uh, actually paying people properly is getting very difficult. That we have a duty of a manager, as a manager to look after our players and to make sure that they are as happy and as content as they can be. And for me, appraisal is part of that process. I could just talk a little bit about my orchestra, um, which is, unless, you ha unless there's anyone here from the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, it is the oldest orchestra in the UK. Um, if they're here, it's perhaps the second oldest. Um, but it has a long history. It was founded in 1858, Founded by the man on the left, the second conductor, many of you will recognise Hans Richter, who was Wagner's conductor of choice, conducted all the first performances of the ring, um, came to Manchester because Manchester was a very wealthy city. Uh, they paid him as much money as it took. Um, and later on, John Barbaroli, present conductor is now Mark Elder, um, to do the investment. We're coming to Madrid in January, so you can hear us play if you like. That's what an orchestra looks like. You all know that. Um, but to set in context, we are a nationally funded organisation. All arts funding for ma major mainstream orchestras in England comes from a national pot, which causes interesting dynamics. Um, players are on full-time contract. Uh, it's a managed orchestra. In other words, it's not a self-governing orchestra. And it has a, a basic uh, sport of trustees um, who do look after the strategic direction and they, have, they appoint me. Um, actually, since I did this slide, um, since the crash in 2008, on a budget of eight million pounds, that's about 10 million euros, our funding from the government has reduced in real terms by 10%. So in other words, it's gone down by 753 quarters of a million a year, and it's going to get worse. This is also an orchestra. This is an orchestra. That's an orchestra, and that's an orchestra. All of these are projects that we've done in the last few months. Uh, and my orchestra, as, as I'm sure many of yours are, is very versatile, <coughs> performs in a number of different contexts. But actually giving, an orchestra, giving concerts in the traditional way is not simply what we're about. We're about much more than that. That's where we live. That's also where we live, very recently. And those are the organisations with, with whom we have partnerships. Now that's the slideshow over. I want to talk about appraisal and why for me it's important. I've said to you that the most important people we have in our organisation are the players. But it's also true that in any organisation, I'm not just talking about an orchestra, for me 90% of the problems, perhaps even 95% of the problems, are caused by bad communication, particularly because people don't understand what other people are trying to achieve. I was a player, uh, as many as suspect, as Benoit was a player as, as well, he'll know that one of the big problems about playing in an orchestra is it's incredibly regimented. The conductor does that, we all do that, exactly the same time, exactly the same place, exactly the same way. And in some ways, it's the ultimate controlled environment. You start at 10 o'clock, you finish at 1. You're told what to do by the conductor. You're told what to do by your section leader. Some people cope well with that. Some people don't cope well with that because they have free spirits. They don't naturally want to be part of the pack. And the way they deal with that and the way that you help them deal with that is important. There's also the other scenario where you have 
a good section leader who's a great player, but a hopeless manager of people. And often what you get is a section which isn't very good. I'm sure many of you will know the situation where you have a wonderful player sitting at the front of the section and you can't quite work out why the section doesn't play very well. And often it's to do with these kinds of issues. I think that most players, when they leave college, are probably only equipped to do one thing, and that is play their instruments. But when they go into an orchestra, they do all, I've just showed you a, a small section of the work that we do. Um, they have to do other things as well, and most importantly, they have to retain their inspiration. What do I mean by that? Um, how many people in this room were, are orchestral players? Not many. Okay. Um, it's true, as I've said, that playing in an orchestra is a very regimented thing. Um, and when you start in the profession, you don't know the repertoire. You come from college, you can maybe play, you know, I can play the Elgar Concerto reasonably well, but I've never played a Tchaikovsky symphony. I've never played Shostakovich. I've never played modern music to that extent. And the first five, four or five years, you're desperately, desperately trying to make sure that you don't mess up, that you know the repertoire, and you often spend a more energy at that point of your career than any other. Incidentally, that's one of the reasons why we don't have long service payments. I think for a lot of players, the most difficult time of their career is when they start. Um, so you're learning the repertoire, you, you, you feel as though you're, you can't, difficult to see the wood from the trees, you're practicing, you're practicing, practicing, hopefully. Uh, you're making new experiences, you're seeing new conductors, and then you get about four or five years and you sort of feel that you, you're on top of it. That's the point at which most players, in my opinion, go one of two ways. They either are very happy to carry on doing what they regard as a very fulfilling task, or they think, no, I've got to be doing something else. I've got to, what is there in this life for me that isn't just about playing an instrument? For me, um, I was also, as well as playing an instrument, I was driving the orchestral van moving the instruments. And I went into management and ended up as of running an orchestra. But that's, and lots of my senior staff uh, took similar routes. But equally, many of the players who are, I regard as my friends are still in the orchestra and get tremendous satisfaction. What they don't get, though, is a voice. And I think appraisal uh, can provide that voice. OK, so what do we do? We do it. In, um, in our standard management format all the time. Uh, it's a process of dialogue. It's not about playing standards. It's absolutely not about playing standards, although they can be discussed. It's about starting a dialogue uh, which actually gives them, empowers them on an equal basis um, to contribute to their thoughts about the organisation. So I was hoping to show you the slides of, of, the, of the paperwork that we use. But, but what we did first is when we started this process, we issued a, a, we started with the section leaders, and they're going, they in their turn are going to talk to their own sections. So we said to them, we've issued a, a piece of paper which, which says what it's about. It's about improving communication. It's about us enabling ourselves to do our jobs better because we want to hear from them what they think about us. That's quite difficult sometimes to spot problems before they occur. Often, in a section of, uh, uh, of an orchestra, let's say principal viola will know that there's a viola player at the back of the section who's got a problem. Maybe a playing problem, maybe a, maybe a, a social problem. Very recently for us, it's been a very, very sad health problem, which we can help about if we know about it earlier than just when it occurs. Um, but it's also, within a formal conversation, and this is important, a formal conversation, it's about their ability to have a discussion about the things which matter most to them. Um, it's about celebrating success. It's not all about negative things. Um, it's allowing the people the opportunity to be honest. It's really surprising when you do this, how much two people who've sat together for maybe sometimes 10 or 15 years will say things that the other one had no knowledge of at all. Um, and that's got to be good for everyone. Um, it's about creating a comfortable environment 
for people to speak when they're not used to it. Uh, I'm not a, I, I, I have no management training, but I've worked in management a lot. I have no training in communication beyond what I picked up. But musicians find this kind of discussion quite scary. It shouldn't be, it doesn't have to be, and it can be very empowering for them, but they need help to get there. It's not about moaning, it's not about gossip, it's not about discussion, giving their view on the, the people they hate the most. Importantly, it's also not about uh, what other people think. If I had a, a euro even, but if I had a pound, for every time a player has come up to me and, and said, the orchestra thinks this, I've, I've always ignored that statement because of course the orchestra doesn't, there are 80 people in my orchestra, they all have different views, and someone coming up to me saying the orchestra thinks this always sets my teeth on edge straight away. It may be about setting actions. It may be, for example, a player in our orchestra who desperately wants to learn how to, to gain an education skill. Uh, perhaps dealing, a number of our players deal with very, very difficult uh, special needs children, and that requires special training. And that, this may be part of the request um, uh, that they put to us. Okay, what, what's it not about? It's not about playing standards. Though if, if players want to discuss the fact that they feel that they're playing particularly brilliantly, or we wouldn't stop that, but it's not fundamentally what it's about. Um, but last, and I, I don't want to eat into too much time, we use a form. We use a form because it makes the conversation um, a formal one. So what we ask them to discuss, and this is a half an hour discussion, initially between the concerts manager and the section leaders, and then eventually the section leaders, which is just going on now, and their sections. Okay, we asked them to discuss what went well, what concerts they liked, what concerts they didn't like, things that didn't go so well. How they feel they're performing as a group. How's the orchestra performing? How's their group performing? How are they getting on? Do they need help in getting on? Often sections do. Um, we asked them about the artistic team. What do they think? of the music director? What do they think of me? What do they think of the people who they come into closest contact with in management? Are there things that we could do better? Are there things they want to tell us we're doing well? Um, and specifically, this is about the kind of artistic life of the orchestra. And then at the end of it, we ask them, invite them to write back and make comments. This discussion takes place um, probably over no more than half an hour and the, and the form is basically just a written note of that discussion. It's no more than that. It's no less than that. We've just done all of the section leaders in the orchestra um, over a period of about a month and a half, all of whom were, the new ones particularly, were slightly suspicious of the process. Every single one of them has said they found it helpful. They're helpful, helpful in trying to understand what we're trying to achieve. And we found it very helpful in understanding what their objectives were. So that's what appraisal about is for me. It's about communication. An or orchestra that communicates well will be a good orchestra. An orchestra that doesn't communicate well will be a bad orchestra. Doesn't matter how good the conductor is, doesn't, I was going to say, it doesn't matter how good the management is. If the management isn't, isn't focusing on communication, they're not a good management. Thank you.